I wasn't dieting, I was stressed about my weight. And if I was dieting, I was stressed about the diet. I was able to let go of that once I adjusted intermittent fasting. Hello, my fellow fasting foodie friends, it's Jackie. Today I'm sharing with you why zero is our new favorite number. If you're like me, and I know you are because we've talked about this, I've talked with so many people on Instagram, in the comments, and I know you guys are like me. You love to eat. I love to eat. My definition of foodie isn't that I go eat um, octopus or that I enjoy calamari with truffle oil, the fancy foods. No, I am someone that is very excited and enthused about food in all forms. So while I may not be the most adventurous eater, I am super excited to eat. All celebrations need to include food. I look forward to planning food. That is why I consider myself a foodie. I love to eat, period. So if you're like me, and you're thinking, why would intermittent fasting work for me? I want to eat from the moment I wake up to when I go to sleep. Well, if you've ever dieted, I dieted. I did Weight Watchers many times, and I'd always lose the weight. However, it would never stay off. We've talked about that before. I'm sure you've been through the same thing. That's where the power of zero comes in. I'm going to take you back to when I worked. I'd walk into a break room, and someone would leave these delicious treats out, and I'd think, Oh, I'm just going to grab this little, this little bit, right? Or you make cookies and you're just going to eat one. Or you make a dinner that you really love, say loaded baked potato soup and you're just going to have a small bowl. Whatever the scenario is that fits you. I just described three that were very present in my own life. So you're just going to have a little bit, right? Well, how much is a little bit? How much is too much? It really depends on when you ask, right? So you have that one cookie that you bake or the small bowl of potato soup, but then you think, well, that really wasn't too much soup, so I'm gonna put some more in. And I'm gonna put a bunch of bacon on top and I'll drizzle a little bit more sour cream or sprinkle a little bit more cheddar cheese. And I didn't, I didn't have that much before. And pretty soon before you know it, I had three bowls of baked potato soup for lunch and I'm already looking forward to dinner. Or I walked by and I cut a portion of the pastry that was left in the workroom. That little sliver wasn't that big of a deal. So when I go refill my coffee cup at the break room and I take another sliver and I do that every single time I refill my coffee cup, it ends up being a lot, right? A little is so subjective. A little really is a slippery slope because it activates your appetite. It makes you hungry. And that is where the joy of zero comes in. When you are intermittent fasting and you love to eat and you think that there is no way you can do it within an eating window, I want you to think of this. How much is zero? Is that sliver zero? No. Is adding another sliver to a sliver zero? No. It is so easy to know. I'm not eating. It's zero. And I know that you have to adapt to become an intermittent faster. I know that you don't just wake up and become an intermittent faster and it's easy to get to zero. It really is quite remarkable how easy saying no can be. You will adapt to intermittent fasting if you make that choice. You will be able to walk into a break room and say, no, it's not my eating window. And then there's not the mental juggling of, did I already have too much? Have I already gone too far? Having the mental regret of the 18 slivers you took or the three bowls of soup, knowing full well that you told yourself you were only going to have one cookie and you ended up eating a dozen, as a taste test. At least if you're like me, that's how it works. You say you're going to have a little bit of something. Your brain really enjoys that little bit, the subjective little bit that may not have even been a little bit to begin with, and it creeps. You add a little bit more, you add a little bit more. You don't have to do the juggle of what's too much, what's too little, how much do I eat now, how many calories is this, how many macros, how much... No, get rid of it. When you have an eating window, it's either time to eat or not and then you enjoy your food. It is so freeing, and that's why I love zero. If you've ever dieted, and I'm guessing if you're watching this video, you are a well-rounded dieter like I was. You know the mental burden of, did I eat too much? Can I have another? Should I stop? Why didn't I stop? It really weighs on you mentally. And even if you have a wonderful eating day, you might have stressed about it all day long. And that really plays a toll on your life. And in my in my own personal life, it played a toll on my mental well-being. If I wasn't dieting, I was stressed about my weight. And if I was dieting, I was stressed about the diet. I was able to let go of that once I adjusted intermittent fasting. Not only did I find results, but I found it so easy to say, I'm not fasting I can eat, or I am fasting, I'm not gonna eat. And knowing that zero 
isn't subjective, it didn't bog my head down. And this is another quote from Dr. Bert Herring. I shared about his book a few weeks ago and another concept that he shared. This is something that he says about your fasting window. When your limit is zero, you don't have to decide when to stop eating because you never started. How freeing is that? Zero. Stay at zero. It's very simple. And once you adjust to the intermittent fasting lifestyle, I promise you, it actually is easy to pass up food. You get very, very used to saying no. And most of your day, you're in a fasted state. I would be so surprised if one of you come to me and tell me I've adapted to intermittent fasting, but I don't find a mental burden lifted. I just can't imagine it because of how much it has helped my own personal mental health. I think that it probably does that for if not everyone, most people. The power of fasting is that when you're fasting, you are used to eating nothing, you get used to it, and then you have the total freedom in your window. When suddenly you go from zero, zero, zero all day, and then you reach whatever your fast is, morning, noon, night, whatever, you don't count anything, you have the freedom, it's zero limits at that point. And of course I say zero limits, I don't mean go stuff your face, I actually wrote a blog post on this, you can check it out in the comments, but you don't have limits, you don't have calorie counting, carbs, and then you close your window and you're back to the zero of eating nothing. And it's easy. You mentally don't have to decide now, how much, when, when do I stop? Is that too much? Why did I do this? It's gone. It's the weight lifted. And to me, that has been better than the actual weight that I've shed from my body. And I'm not joking. I can almost guarantee you that if you give fasting a chance and you take the steps to adapt another video, climbing the sand hill, kind of talks about taking the steps, getting to your goal, adapting. That video will be linked in the comments. You can check it out. And if you're a mom or a dad, you can check out a video that I made where I share with you how I approach making food for my little kids all day long in this video right here. Thank you so much for watching. Ciao, Donna, ciao.